This lecture is on maintaining quality systems. So learning objectives, conduct final quality check on completed work orders or work or orders, report on the quality of processes and work outcomes, and implement improvements to work processes. So next one is we have the quality systems. So a quality program responds as effectively as possible to the needs it was designed to meet. So effective okay, is, a total, is totally consistent with the mission and the philosophy of the organization. That's why we have the mission and the philosophy of the organization because uh, you would like to lead your people somewhere. And so this quality program should be consistent with it is sensitive to the needs and culture of the target population, of course, and is a model of ethical behavior. But why is quality important for grassroots organizations? Okay, that's a question. Let's try to answer. Quality makes a group more effective at meeting the needs of concerned people. Okay, concerned. So it's more effective again. Quality adds strength and credibility to the organization. Of course, ethically, you're bound to provide absolute best quality of service or advocacy you can. That's why you created your company in the first place. And quality is always more economical in the long run. How is that? Bili ka ng cellphone, mura lang siya. After a few weeks, patay na. I mean, destroyed na siya, sira na siya. So, di bibili ka ulit, di ba? So, quality is more economical. Minsan mo lang siya gagaw, minsan, minsan mo lang siya bilhin, pero it will serve you for a long time. Then, after that long time, saka ka ulit bibili. So, most economical. And of course, as we have mentioned, that is why your company is created, for you to be able to give absolute quality service or product it uh, also developing a culture of quality can uh, have a number of positive effects so first one if staff members and volunteers know that they are uh, that they and the organizations are doing the best job possible it builds their morale it makes them proud wow ako yun. i belong to that company well uh, unlike if the company is not doing well then uh, O, oh, saan ka nagtatrabaho? Ah, dyan lang, dyan lang, sa tabi-tabi. Diba? Kasi nga, your morale is not, you're not even proud of it. But if you know that you are delivering something quality to your people, or I mean to, the, to the customers, then you would be very proud. Where do you work? Oh, here in this company. And we are the best in this uh, side. So, next one is, striving for quality helps to develop organizational and individual competence, thus continually improving your organization. Also, a quality program continually increases its performance level and improves its service delivery, which gives your organization credibility and ultimately benefits your target audience. So, we, we have with us key elements of total quality. First one, we have customer focus. Everything an organization does should have the needs of the customer as its starting point. So, if your work, in your works, I should say, the customer is the target population or the community that will benefit from what you are offering or doing. So, question is, what are the needs to which you are responding to? Next, how can you effectively meet those needs? Then, with respect for the people you're intending to serve. Next is the obsession with quality. So, quality has to be something that considered, that's considered from the very beginning and built into everything a business or organization does. 
So planning carefully, monitoring your work, and constant re-evaluation and adjustment are all extremely important. You don't ensure quality by catching mistakes before you reach the uh, customer. You ensure it by setting up a system in which you don't make the mistakes to begin with. Everyone in the organization must understand and adopt this point of view if the organization is truly going to have quality performance. But if you don't believe in this, then your organization would not be able to achieve what it wants to achieve. Continual improvement of systems. In this part, the work of an organization must be viewed as a process that is never finished. Continual. I think the, the, the term here even should be continuous. It does not stop. Okay, It does not stop. It goes on and on. It improves every now and then. So improvement, even for you as an individual, should never stop. It should always be an ending. There should always be a room for you to improve. Next is unity of purpose. So in order for quality to be achieved, everyone in organi an, or an organization or business has to work together toward common goals. And the means that means mutual support throughout the organization. Not turf battles, not jealousy, not a necessary competition. So all interactions among in the organization, among the people in the organization, should be mutually helpful and aimed at achieving the best possible performance of their organization as a whole. You always have to remember that without that organization that you are working with and you are working for, uh, where would you be? Well, it might be easy for you to find other jobs, but would it be that would it be that way all throughout? Okay. Next. Teamwork is also very important. Working in a team rather than individually. People make better connections with their colleagues and the organization and create better results. So teamwork removes performance pressure from the individual and usually coaxes better in performance from everyone. Next, we also have employee involvement. So if everyone in an organization is to be committed to quality performance, then all staff members should have the ability to contribute to its achievement. This means that people must have enough control over their own jobs to do them effectively. Next, we have education and training. Achieving quality requires constant learning for everyone in an organization. And that learning needs to be part of the organizational culture. Not only should staff members be learning from others in the organization, but they should also be encouraged to take courses, to attend organization-sponsored trainings and workshops, and to visit other organizations. And the last one is scientific approach. For grassroots and community-based organizations, this means using the best research available as well as the experience of others to construct an effective program or initiative. The best way really for you to succeed is to take things scientifically. I mean, uh, for you to be able to decide on something, first, you have to base it from scientific researches. So is there a research that proves that they need this product that you are going to make? Yeah. That approach is much more likely to result in success and high quality than relying only on intuition or on what seems to be politically correct. Sometimes this is the problem with people. We decide on things politically. Sometimes we decide on things emotionally. Not all, not, it should not always be the case. Okay, That's why we have scientific researches. Next, some elements of TQM that would work toward quality in any environment include... So the need for planning, monitoring, evaluation, and adjustment, teamwork and empowerment of all in the organization, constant education and training of all, for all staff, and attention to the needs of the target population and to the results for them. 
Then, we also have identifying and changing what doesn't work well. So, if it doesn't work well, then you have to change. Encouraging and rewarding rather than discouraging new ideas. So, if they open a new idea, then you you study it first before you say, oh, that is something uh, not appropriate. Developing an organization-wide culture of quality and keeping at it over the long term. Okay. Next, we have here, how do you maintain quality performance? So, we have here institutionalization of dynamism. This means an organization needs to be dynamic, always moving, and always seeking to continued improvement. Yun yung sabi ko kanina, improvement should be continuous. You do not stop there because you're happy with it. We have to go further beyond our comfort zones. An assumption of dynamism needs to be part of the organizational culture with everyone's understanding and buying on into it. Encouraging and providing support to staff, volunteers, and participants. What's that for? That's for learning. This means also listening to and carefully evaluating ideas from everyone because everyone's idea matters. Okay. Encouraging openness to change and experimentation with new ideas and strategies. Next one, we also have the long-range strategic planning. So it needs to ask some questions about its role and its future. Like, is it meeting an ongoing need effectively? If not, what does it need to do to become more effective? So have community needs changed? Are they likely to? If so, how can the organization regroup to meet new needs? So to maintain quality, an organization needs to continually look at itself over and for the long term. May, may long term dapat na tinitignan, hindi yung uh, pang ngayon lang, pang short term lang. Next, it, uh, it needs to ask some questions also about are there more or difficult things it should be doing? Does it need to expand its present activities to meet current or projected community needs? Does it need more resources? Or will it need more in the future? What are some likely sources there? Next topic would be the typical loss and damage control systems. So risk in every organization is everywhere. Having a formal risk management program is so important for us to be able to control this damage, the loss and damage. So what does that mean? It means that every organization should develop a practical way of identifying, monitoring, and managing the risk that could negatively impact the organization. So the first key is to identify the risk that arise from what you own, your property. Then what you do, what is your liability, and what does it, okay, the personnel. We also believe all organizations should thoroughly analyze their business risks, which can be insured. After your, you've identified all your insurable risks, they should be analyzed to determine the likelihood and severity of the loss. After the identific identification and analysis are complete, it's time to utilize one, use one, or a combination, and then following essential loss control strategies, which we're going to see next. So we have here essential loss control strategies. We have six. We have here avoidance and prevention. Ito yung magkatabi ngayon. So what is avoidance and what is prevention? Avoidance is by choosing to avoid a particular risk altogether, you can eliminate potential risk associated with it. So example, builders can choose to shut down construction operations in inclement weather. Siyempre, uh, bumabagyo. Alangan namang ituloy mo pa rin yung ginagawa mo. That would be risky. So, you have to stop it. You have to uh, halt the production. Okay? So, then continue it after everything is better. Okay, next one is prevention. Accepting that certain risks are unavoidable, you can implement preventive measures to reduce 
loss frequency. For example, installing video surveillance cameras can prevent the frequency of theft in stores. Oh, mahal ang uh, CCTV. Yes, talagang mahal. Pero that would give you a very good benefit also. So, lowering a highway speed limit can reduce the number of automobile accidents on a specific road. Diba? Because you tried to lower the speed limit. Oh. Di, na, Nag-prevent ka doon. Loss prevention measures break the sequence of events leading to a loss and thus make a le loss less. I uh, mean, loss less likely to occur. So, yun yung avoidance at prevention. Next one, we have reduction and separation. So, reduction measures can be applied before and after a loss occurs to minimize, minimize naman the severity of potential losses. So, for example, erecting firewalls to limit damage from fire is a pre-loss measure. measure sorry. Activating a fire detection or suppression system is a post-loss measure. So, the physical and financial impacts of the loss are reduced by implementing this strategy. Again, uh, reduction, you reduce the losses by uh, investing to it. Next, separation. By isolating uh, loss exposures from uh, one another, you can minimize the adverse effects of a single loss. For example, storing inventory at, at two separate warehouses will minimize losses if only one facility is destroyed. Kasi dalawa yung warehouse mo eh. So pag nasira yung isa, meron ka pang isa. So separation of exposure units can reduce a business dependence on a single asset or activity. Ito yung problema na laging sinasabi ng mga insurance companies, if you put all your investments into only one, pag nasira yung one, wala na. Kaya meron din, meron din ako kaibigan, sabi niya, iwaram di kwartam. Anong ibig sabihin ng iwara? It does not mean that you put them everywhere. I mean, iwaram di tadatar or whatever that is in your house. It means that you invest them in different things. Kasi if you only invest it into one, o kaya ilagay mo lang si isang bangko, pag na, wala na yung bangko, wala na. Diba? Nasira na lahat. You look at this, uh, pag uh, yung mga binagyo, for example, sa Cagayan, yung latest natin, uh, nasira lahat, wala na kami, lahat ng napundar namin. Well, I'm not trying to mock these people, okay? Because hindi naman nila ginusto na masira yung kanilang mga pinag-ipunan. Pero the thing is, doon nila nilagay sa iisa lang na investment. So, doon lang sa bahay o kaya doon lang sa kanilang car. Tapos nung nasira yung bahay, nasira yung car, wala na yung investment. So, totally nawala yung lahat. Ito yung masama dito sa mga physical investments. Sabi nga nila, do not invest in something uh, material because material things can be destroyed and can, uh, can, can be ruined. Invest on your relationship with people and invest on your relationship with God. Wow, ang saya, di ba? Okay, bakit tayo napunta doon? Now, we go to the next one. We have the last two. Duplication and diversification. So, duplication is you keep backups or spares or copies of critical property or information. Kasi nga nasisira yung mga yan. So, meron ka dapat backup. Then we also have diversification, so spread loss exposures over numerous projects, products, markets, or regions. For example, a business can enter into different geographic markets. If one market becomes too competitive, the other markets may still generate enough profit or for the business to continue its uh, operations. I've noticed here in our city, in Baguio City, there are some stalls na dati. Example, I saw one. Dati siyang computer shop. Maluwang siya. So, all computers. Then, one time when uh, the the quarantine was uh, loosening, uh, 
uh, I, I had to print something so I needed to go there. So I was talking to the owner and uh, nataon na yung owner yung andon and then she was telling me that ang hirap ng buhay ma'am. Uh, parang ngayon walang mga estudyante na nagko-computer. Wala namang nangangailangan ng computer dito kasi may kanya-kanyang computers na at home because they are not allowed to go out. So I do not really know what to do especially that I have to pay my rent. I have to maintain this computer. So two months nang hindi, ay three months pa yata na hindi pa na-open itong mga computers. Pwedeng ma-destroy. So what, what could be done. Then, I, I just uh, told her, oh, nga, uh, then uh, probably we have to find ways on how to, you know, deal with all these things and uh, we really have to embrace it because whether we like it or not, this is the new normal na sabi nga natin. There is a new normal and we have to know how to deal, we have to learn how to deal with it. So, the next time I went there, wow, something amazing. So, my parts na na may mga computers pa rin, pero apat na lang yata yun. And then, the other parts ay for dropping dropping area na. Di ba yun na yung uso ngayon? So, may iba na na store naman na siya. Eh, but, everything is owned by, still by the owner. But then, she was able to do something with the problem. So, meron tayong diversification. Okay? So that, hindi masyado yung loss niya and then, she would be able to regain those losses. Okay? That's the good thing about diversification. Okay, next one is the work planning and organization processes. So what do we mean when you say work planning? Work planning is an innovative approach to accomplishing the work in an organization and to managing the staff who perform the work. So you plan. It assumes that all staff members approach their work with a common and consistent desire to do their best. That is the basic assumption. As I've said, you have to think positively, not negative about your workers. Okay. So the process here, the organizational process is by doing this one. Review plans and objectives. Second, determine the work activities necessary to accomplish ob objectives. Third, classify the group the and group the necessary work activities into manageable units. Then we have number four, assign activities and delegate authority. Number five, design a hierarchy of relations. Okay. Under the enterprise of quality systems and procedures we have here, um, quality control is very important because it's the process of overseeing routine production produ uh, procedures to ensure the consistency of quality of manufactured goods. Remember what we have mentioned a while back, quality is always the core of any company. So there are five pillars here of modern enterprise quality management. We have here, so the first one is the process integration. So it is concerned with the first uh, uh, how the process is integrated. Kung titignan nyo itong flow chart na ito, there is a problem. Okay? So, the, if the customer complaint process is completely separated from the corrective action process, then there is no, there is a room, there is a room for uh, improvement. But in this case, there is none. Kasi nga walang connection yung ating uh, I mean, yeah, asan yun? Yung ating complaint process doon sa corrective process. Okay. Pero kung meron, meron tayong uh, may mangyayari doon sa uh, flow. Okay. So, that's the integration. The second pillar is on the system flexibility and ex extensibility. So, Connectivity means the ability to connect with other processes. Are they connected to each other? Expandability uh, enables you to add unlimited workflows, meaning it is so open that it can be uh, worked with in different ways. And configurability, it eliminates the time and expense of changing low uh, level source code reconfiguring databases and building workflows from scratch for you not to go to scratch. Pillar 3 is on centralized monitoring and management. So we have here the alerts, reporting, men, uh, measurements, and then the management dashboards. And then 
we have here a pillar four, a modern and enterprise qual quality management system should have a compliance built into the system. Okay, so this is on the regulatory standards and requirements also. Then we have pillar five, a culture of quality and compliance. Uh, he or uh, contributes or this one contributes to uh, the pillar includes top-down commitment of top-down meaning from the top to the uh, down to the employees okay active management communication of the management and accountability by executive staff and management Next here is on the worksite information management systems. So an information management system collects and manages the data that is stored in a variety of formats and makes it accessible to the people who needs it. So information is very important that we, it has to be stored and managed properly. An informa information management system centralizes the information so it is not duplicated in different places. Sayang ang space. Ganyan. So, information must be manageable and accessible also. So, kung kailangan, dapat andyan na. Okay. It should be manageable. Pwedeng i-edit, pwedeng i-revise. Okay. Yun lamang po ang uh, discussion na ito. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in the next videos.